we're talking about the 777G and we're going to talk about the iron that you saw this morning. I'm definitely going to talk about the uh, front axis redesign first. I want to point out that the bumper extensions are gone, like I said earlier. Solid bumper comes all the way out here. You've got your walkway across the front and your handrail for your access system. You can see that the grill is now flat as opposed to the rake and tuck design that's on the 777F um, over there. Um, that allows a couple different things. It allows us to land these ladders, like I discussed earlier, uh, staircases onto the bumper. And it also allows serviceability to the batteries without having to remove the lower grill. That lower grill on the F truck come, came way out here further and made it much more difficult to get down and get the batteries out. You don't have to remove that grill to actually get the batteries out. Um, wheel chocks would mount up here um, when not in use. Continue walking around this machine a little bit. Um, I want to point out the, the star pattern on the uh, staircases, both sides. The transition platform up top has star pattern as well. It's much more aggressive and it's uh, definitely a, a safety feature. The window washing platform right up top of here, you can see that it's a much larger footprint of a, of a platform. It allows someone to stand up there, clean the window, and be completely guarded by handrail on the back side there. I guess I also want to touch base here on the electrical box. We've got two ports here, one's for VIMS, one's for ET. These two switches here, one's a hydraulic lockout, one's an engine crank lockout. You've got a couple different breakers. You've got your auxiliary start receptacle right here, and then your main disconnect switch is right here in this box right up front, and this just closes like that. So, that. so that's, it sits right there, it's ground level accessible. And move around here to the corner. I want to talk about our service center here. I'll stand back in here. The service center is an option on the 777G. This is actually one of four different service center options. This service center option allows you to fill all your fluids up front. Um, there's another port here you see that's missing. This is actually a grease fill for your Lincoln Lube. You can fill your grease up here too if you order the full service center meal deal ticket package. This one's actually one step below that. It does everything but grease, and the grease fill is um, back on the other side of the machine um, for this particular option. We also, we also have the standard machine will come with a, um, comes with the engine fill right here, and that's it. And then it has all your lubrication are all spread out across the machines and grease works basically. And then your fast fill over at your fuel tank. And this service center has the cluster, the cluster lube, and if you uh, get the other, you, you can get the, the basic package, which is your fast fill lube here, you, and it also comes with uh, an auto lube fill, like I said, is over on the other side of the machine. If you don't want to spend the full money for all this service center option up front, if you just want to have, um, if you just want to have the auto lube system, you can go basic with the auto lube plus. Um, right here is your staircase lights and your um, in, in, a quick engine shutdown, so if someone down here can shut down the engine from, uh, from ground level. Stepping back up inside here, it's a little, little difficult to see, but as you guys uh, walk through here, take a look up inside. You can see the engine after treatment. The VOC package is up on top of the, up on top of the engine up there. NRS coolers. Um, the Rockford fan is standard on this machine. I also want to point out on this machine, we've got visibility package offering, which is your school bus mirrors up front to allow for 360 visibility. We have a new multi-convex mirror for the driver on this side. Instead of the flat mirror, this multi-convex mirror, uh, we have service lights that are standard on this machine. They're on this side and on the other side of the machine. And also we have uh, payload management lights here, red green lights. It tells you when your body is full. This is the basic offering that comes on every machine. There's also a scoreboard offering that's an optional attachment. And it basically looks like the large mining scoreboards, if you know what I'm talking about there. And it, it basically will show you, you know, 98 tons, if that's what you have in there. It goes 100, it just has one for the first digit. And then if you have 102 or whatever, it'll show you that up there on the scoreboard. Um, lastly, I'm gonna talk about the cab a little bit. The cab has a couple different features. As you can see, this window is a little bit different than the 777F. It actually has a power window for the driver on the left-hand side. And the right-hand side has a wind door, which was a running change on the 777F, so some of the later models do have that wind door, but it's basically a window that opens like a door um, for egress on the other side. Um, underneath here, it has got a uh, sound-reinforced floor, so the operator has a better environment inside. It's a much quieter cab than the 777F. 
And I believe that's uh, all the features we're going to talk about the cab. So I'm going to turn it over to Lane, and he's going to talk about some of the more, more of the features going down the side of the machine here. One of the, the big changes on the 777G is the incorporation of, uh, first and foremost, the wet brakes or oil-cooled brakes are now standard. Dry front brakes are no longer offered on the G. The front wheel also incorporates a park brake. So we've got greater slope capability, um, very similar to what we use the 785 on up. In addition, the front wheels have got uh, the brake cooling flow reversed. So the majority of the brake cooling flow will go through the brake before it hits the dual cone seal. Lower pressure drop across the dual cone seal, better dual cone seal life. The brake is also shimmed so that it doesn't have as much motion, better control of the face load on the dual cone seals, better dual cone seal life. Uh, those changes also are carried through to the rear wheels as well, with the exception of what we call reverse flow that was already on the rear wheels. Coming around to the hydraulic tank, we've separated out the torque converter and transmission circuit. They've got a separate sump that's part of the torque converter housing now. So the hydraulic tank is strictly brake cooling and hoist brake actuation. Uh, we've removed that torque converter transmission. It's got its own sump, 30 weight oil, uh, cleaner oil for the torque converter and transmission. Uh, should give better component life. We also have right here, this is a prototype. It will look uh, a little better in production, but this is a sight gauge for that torque converter sump. So when the operator does his walk arounds before they start the machine, they can very quickly and easily check that torque converter sump level without having to climb underneath the machine. And uh, one of the big issues is to get there, they'd have to walk between the mud flap and tire. Uh, if you're hot swapping trucks in the pit, that's the last thing an operator wants to do at the very start of a shift is get all covered in mud and dirt and then have to sit in the cab. So that's our, our torque converter sump, sight glass, and these are the sight gauges for the standard hydraulic tank. Fill for the torque converter sump is actually on top of the hydraulic tank, just behind the hydraulic tank fill. So common service point for any of your lube truck operators or the shop personnel. Moving around to the back, talked about the changes for the rear wheel for dual cone seal life improvement. Um, no other significant changes outside of a new brake wear indicator that's been incorporated. That's common with the 773, 775, and 777. Gives you a good opportunity to check that brake wear, not have to pull the brake apart to check it. We'll come around to the back. If you're familiar with the 777F or the D, or even the, the prior models to the D, this rear axle housing will look significantly different. Much larger cross section, uh, it's a much beefier looking casting. Believe it or not, it doesn't weigh hardly any different than the prior casting. It's just an optimized shape, much better structure. Uh, also incorporates a couple of other features that are pretty obvious here on the back. This here is the filter for the continuous rax filtration, continuous rear axle filtration. It's uh, designed pretty much stolen from the 785D. It's continuous. If the engine is running, we are flowing oil through this filter and cleaning the oil. So think of it as kidney looping the truck whenever it's sitting idle, going down the haul road, it is continuously cleaning that rear axle oil. In addition, we've got the sight gauge. The other thing that's obvious if you've been around these trucks very much at all, the rear struts have been inverted. Uh, with the strut on the upside, you'd sometimes get gunk that would accumulate up on top of that seal, work its way down, compromise seal life. By inverting, we actually improve the seal life. I guess I will also point out that this is uh, equipped with the camera system. The 777G will have full CAT detect available. Come around to this side of the machine. The fuel tanks on the 777G, we maintain the capacity that we've got on the 777F, a 300 gallon or a 350 gallon tank. Visually, the biggest difference is this recess port. The thing we heard from the field is if we could recess that port, 
if they're doing offside loading with wheel loaders, sometimes if the wheel loader is just a little sideways, they could get in and hit that fast fill port. By recessing it, we eliminate that damage. You'll notice here that we've got a cover plate on. Every truck that we ship will have a fast fill port in this location. We don't have fast fill available in our fuel island at uh, TPG. We have to splash fill. Down underneath, kind of hard to see from outside, but you can see our new torque converter housing. That's got the sump for the torque converter and transmission. We talked about that a little bit on the other side when we had a hydraulic tank. It also incorporates level sensors so that we know if we've got a, if you had a sudden catastrophic loss of powertrain oil, you'd get an indication in the cab that you've lost that oil through VIMS and not have to wait for the loud clunking noises to come from the transmission to let you know that you've got a, a powertrain oil leak. So we can detect stuff before it becomes a problem, before you've got expensive contingent damage. All 777Gs will come with some sort of sound attenuation on the exhaust. Come back around onto this side, it's a little hard to see. We had to make a compromise with where we put the tires to show as much as we could. We do have grouped engine filters, so our engine oil filters, primary and secondary fuel filters are all in one location. We do have the electric fuel priming pump still. That's a carryover from the F. How we're using it is a little bit different on the G truck. When you key on, that fuel priming pump will run automatically until we reach a desired cutout pressure on the fuel system. There's also a timeout. If it goes three minutes without reaching that pressure, it'll eventually time out to prevent any damage to the pump motor. But there's no more standing next to the truck holding that switch, hoping that you've got that system primed. It's all handled automatically and monitored by the machine. If it doesn't get to full prime, key off, key back on, it'll run through the cycle again.